You may be new to Community Solar and the concept of subscribing to Community Solar produced from solar farms, but likely you're here because you want to find out if Community Solar is right for you. While we often discuss the benefits of Community Solar on the channel, today I'll talk about the most common concerns about Community Solar so you can see the full picture and decide for yourself. Hi everyone, it's Kelly and welcome to Going Solar with Pivot Energy, where we post weekly videos on commercial solar, solar financial incentives, and all things community solar. Subscribe and hit the bell below to stay updated when we post new videos. Before we dive into some of the most frequently asked questions, let's recap what community solar is. Community solar is a way for residents, businesses, organizations, and municipalities to participate in solar energy without installing solar on their roof or property. Instead, you subscribe to solar energy produced at a local off-site solar farm. You simply pay your solar energy subscription, which is the difference between the credits you receive for the amount of energy your solar subscription produces and your subscription discount. You often save money because your credit is greater than the cost of your subscription. Subscription. We have lots of videos on why community solar is a great option for those who cannot or do not want to put solar panels on their residential or commercial property. Check them out in the links in the description below. Pivot Energy is a community solar developer and provider and the largest in Colorado, but we also work across the US. So yes, we really do know what we're talking about. When it comes to concerns about community solar and solar farms, we've heard it all. Here are the most common. The first concern that we often hear is that solar farms take up a lot of space, decrease available farmland, decrease property values, and are just an eyesore. Now I can see how some may think solar panels could take away from the natural landscape around, but many people don't realize solar panels are mounted very close to the ground where they are out of sight unless you are fairly close to them. Since a solar farm is not tall like a wind turbine, it doesn't block the view or interfere with the landscape horizon. We also work with landowners to place fencing and pollinator plants and trees around the array, helping it blend into the landscape. Another issue that's been brought up is that solar gardens are taking away land from farms. We partner with all types of landowners across the country to lease their land for solar farms. The truth is, not as much farmland is being used as it once was years ago because farmers are more productive and can produce more crops with fewer acres. This means a solar farm will run concurrently with an active farm, and once the solar program has run its course, that land can be converted back into traditional farmland. Hosting a solar project for 20 to 25 years can actually restore the land and bring additional income to the farm, sometimes saving the farm's future. Lastly, some folks may think building a solar project leads to property value decreases or environmental degradation. This is actually false. According to recent research, large-scale solar arrays often have no measurable impact on the value of adjacent properties and in some cases may have positive effects. To dispel the myth of environmental degradation, we implement sustainable seeding and land practices on all of our community solar projects. When building the solar array, we seed with a mix of native grass and wildflowers, creating a pollinator habitat for local bees and other insects. And in certain areas, we also employ a vegetation management strategy called agrivoltaics. Agrivoltaics combines agriculture with photovoltaics, meaning we use sheep, bees, and other grazing animals to replenish the land below the panel. This method enriches the soil beneath our panels, providing farmers and ranchers with new sources of income, creates pollinator habitats, increases biodiversity, and provides the hosting communities with long-term environmental, economic, and educational benefits. Additionally, using this form of vegetation management will decrease our community solar garden's impact by eliminating the need for fossil-fueled machinery, herbicides, and pesticides. Our holistic approach to land stewardship also allows us to provide as much benefit to the land beneath our panels as we do our subscribers. Another concern we often hear is that solar gardens could take away from local jobs. For example, if farmers stop farming, then it could impact seed stores or manure hauling companies. However, this concern is a huge misconception. Solar farms actually create jobs in local communities. For one, solar developers pay taxes that will get paid to the community where the solar gardens are located. This allows community schools, roads, hospitals, and more to be built and maintained. Secondly, community solar creates thousands of local jobs and millions of dollars in economic impact. Penn State conducted a study that found construction of new community solar facilities would generate an estimated $1.8 billion in economic impact, create over $793 million in labor income, and support more than 11,000 jobs in various sectors across Pennsylvania. The next concern is something that the industry and my team at Pivot is actively working on, expanding access to community solar nationwide. Unfortunately, community solar is not available in every state. As of 2021, there's at least one community solar project online in over 40 states, but only 22 states in Washington, D.C. have legislation that supports community solar programs. 
For a state to build community solar, local governments need to pass legislation that allows consumers to take advantage of solar electricity produced off-site. Pivot Energy is actively involved in the policy work to expand access to cost-saving benefits of community solar across the country. We believe policy engagement is one of the most beneficial things we can do as a company to combat the climate crisis. For example, in New Mexico, we recently participated in a Senate working group with local organizations and stakeholders to create an equitable and successful community solar program. We are proud to say that as of March 2021, the Community Solar Act passed the New Mexico legislature by an overwhelming majority and has been signed into law. This bill will not only save New Mexicans money on their electricity, but also create thousands of local jobs, hundreds of millions of dollars in local economic development, and generate millions in annual tax revenue to the state. The last question we often hear is, am I eligible for the Solar Investment Tax Credit, also known as the ITC? It's true that community solar subscribers are not eligible to receive any tax credits, but participating in the program is free and doesn't require any upfront investments. Solar incentives like the ITC are only available for residents and businesses who purchase their solar panels. When you subscribe to Community Solar, you are supporting clean energy generation in your local community while taking advantage of the economic benefits of solar without any installation needed. If your business has space and can afford to build your own on-site solar project, by all means do it and take advantage of those tax benefits. However, if you don't want to spend the money or you don't have the space, Community Solar is a great option for you and can save you money. How, you might ask? Your subscription offers a program discount on the solar credits given to you by your utility. Save money and no expense for solar panels? Sounds great to us! Regardless of whether you choose rooftop solar or community solar, you're contributing to a clean energy future. Together, we can offset our carbon footprints and reduce our reliance on polluting fossil fuels. If you're looking to sign up or get started with community solar, head over to our website, Pivot energy.net. There are several helpful links in the video description too. Our community solar projects serve anyone or any organization that pays an electricity bill. Local government, school districts, businesses, nonprofits, and residents can all subscribe and benefit from community solar. We start by gathering the annual historic electricity consumption of a residence or a building. Then we work with the subscriber to meet their environmental and economic goals by accurately sizing a subscription to a solar project. We're excited to help you get started, so reach out to my email if you have any questions. Questions. It's in the description below. I hope we were able to answer any remaining questions about the most common concerns about community solar so now you can make the best solar decision for you. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel for weekly videos on all things community and commercial solar. See you next time!